Hello everyone and welcome. In this lesson, we will learn about bones. All right, so bones in 3D work the same way a human being bones work. So any object or model attached to these bones will be driven by them as the bones transform as they move around. Okay, so let's say we go ahead and see how these bones work in 3ds Max. We can access the bone tools from the animation menu and here is the bone tools. A new dialog box will appear. Actually, this is going to be your best friend when working with bones. You can do a lot of cool things with this dialog box to get the results you need when creating bone objects from here what we will go ahead and do is head over to the top view by pressing the alt w to minimize first the viewport okay then right click in the top view to activate it and alt w again to maximize this time the top view all right the reason why we are using this top view is we want to draw these bones. Let me hit the G key to turn off the grid, okay? And so the reason why we are drawing our bones in this top view is that we want to draw the bones in a way that follows the flow of the arm, okay? To see this clearly, I will go ahead and select first the object of the arm, okay? And I will change their wireframe color by heading over to the color palette. And let me choose a much more lighter color. Let's go ahead and work with this yellow, okay? Let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks beautiful. Okay, as I have said before, we want to draw these bones, okay, in a way that will follow the flow of the arm, okay? This flow right over here, okay? So we want to draw the bone object in a way that follow this flow of the arm. All right. Notice how we have this slight bend at the elbow that is creating this sort of angle as you can see this is what we want and this is mainly for working with inverse kinematics <laughs> don't worry we will discuss inverse kinematics in the next lesson but what we want is this bend in the elbow okay this bend and we want to draw our bones to follow this bend and this angle so that the arm will function correctly when we apply inverse kinematics to it so again we will discuss inverse kinematics in the following lesson okay so don't worry now what we will do now is turn on the wireframe mode by pressing the F3, okay? I've already done that, so make sure to press the F3, okay, to see the wireframe of your object, to see where the bones are going to be placed. We will then choose the Create Bones command from the Bone Tools dialog box. We will click once, let me move this to the side, we will click once at the upper arm, specifically at the shoulder area, then we would like to click at the elbow area, next we will click at the wrist, and we can click once more at the tip of the fingers, just so we can see the flow of the chain. Now to finish the creation process, we will right click once, 
then right click again to exit from the create bones so we want to right click twice all right now depending on the size of your bone object it might be just fine for you but if you ever need to go ahead and correct the size of your bone object this will be very easy to do here's how you can do it let's first go back to the perspective view so you can see this we will use this time a keyboard shortcut to save some time we will use the p key on our keyboard and voila <laughs> Welcome to the perspective view. All right, awesome. So if you ever need to change the size of your bone object, make sure to select first the bone object you would like to change. Let me move this to the top so you can see this clearly, okay? So we will make sure to select first the bone object we would like to correct its size and from the modify tab and by adjusting the width and height parameters all right take a look we are able to modify the size of our bone object to get the results that work best for us all right so i will go ahead and bring everything back by hitting the control z to undo i think these results were fine for this setup i just want to show you how to adjust the size of your bone objects if you ever need to do so okay great so we have created now a bone chain and notice as we start to move these bones around let's start with the upper bone and as we start to rotate this notice how we have created this automatic hierarchy which is awesome this saves us a lot of time go into the forearm as we start to rotate that right everything is working beautifully go into the wrist all is well <laughs> so that's another benefit from using the bone object is that we create this automatic hierarchy this automatic parent child relationship so with bones we can go a little bit more complex and build an entire character rig with them okay great so let's say we go ahead now and place these bone objects within the arm let's grab the upper arm bone and start moving this down into place okay let's move it down just a bit until we have managed to place it exactly where the actual arm and model is all right this is looking great we can check the position of our bones from all of our views if we want to okay this is looking great let's press let's activate first the pers this perspective view and hit the t key to bring the top view and all is well our bone chain is placed correctly okay now feel free to rename these bone objects if you would like to stay more organized for example we can take the upper arm bone and we can have it renamed from here from this section over here in the command panel okay we will have it renamed to upper arm underscore bone the next one will be called forearm underscore bone let's select the next bone object this one will be called wrist or hand feel free to select 
whichever you want underscore bone and this last bone over here we'll call it bone we'll call it first wrist underscore tip bone all right beautiful and so now that these bone objects have been placed where they need to be and renamed it's time to do a little bit of linking and have these bones to actually control the arm model of our crocodile friend we know how to link our objects already let's go and start with the hand we'll select first our hand and model okay the object we would like to be the child or we'll select then the link tool from the mean toolbar and we'll link the arm model to the hand bone we'll press with the left mouse button we'll click and hold then drag to the hand bone until the icon changes okay so we'll now release and there we go all right let's go and do this again for the forearm we'll select the forearm model we'll select then the link tool we'll click and hold and link to the forearm bone okay one more we'll take care of the upper arm mesh now using the schematic view okay so we'll do something different just to show you the various ways we can link our objects so we will use this time the schematic view we will go ahead to the mean toolbar and we'll click on the schematic view icon all right we'll select the upper arm mesh we'll look for it let's see let's see where it is we can select it from the scene and here it is it is highlighted in the schematic view okay and all we need to do is we'll go ahead and select the connect it is the link tool it is just with a different name so we will select the link tool we will click we will look for the bone that would like to be the parent of our upper arm mesh let's see where is here is the upper arm bone so we will click on the upper arm mesh and then hold our left mouse button and drag to the parent objects which is the upper arm bone all right we have now created a new hierarchy as you can see this new hierarchy before what we had is the geometry that was parented one to another but now we have them all linked to their bone objects and so let's go and check the power of working with bone objects let's select the upper arm bone we'll grab the rotate tool let's close out the bone tools window and start rotating that around and all right notice we not only have a bone controlling the arm but notice where the pivot is here is the pivot of the upper arm okay and so the pivot of where we are linked to has overridden what we had before as our pivot which is super cool no need to go ahead and modify the pivot of the child object so again if we start to rotate the forearm bone around now we are getting some really nice elbow movement pretty cool right same thing goes for the hand if we select the wrist bone and start rotating it all right this is looking fantastic great how exciting is that all right so these are the basics of 
working with bones inside 3ds max what they are and why they are so useful the next lesson we'll learn about inverse kinematics